Hello, my name is Apova Kaluru and today I'm joined by Professor Cynthia Inlow at the 25th IPSA World Congress of Political Science in Brisbane. Uh, thank you for joining us today. It's Cynthia. lovely to be here. Uh, so Cynthia Enlow is a professor at Clark University and a seminal voice in feminist international relations. Um, so the theme of this year's conference is borders and margins. Mm. And so within this theme, it's so broad, you know, we think about things like inclusion and exclusion, mm -hmm. um, othering and securitization. But why is it so important within this theme to think about and, and ask the question, where are the women? Well, I think I remember the first the first feminist writer who I ever heard talk about borders was a Latina feminist in the US trying to make sense of, now this is 20, 25 years ago, so it may be a new theme for IPSA, but it's not a new theme for a lot of feminists because they realize that women are oftentimes caught across all kinds of borders. Um, sometimes because they're literally physically moving across borders, sometimes because marriage creates borders. I mean, marriage is very big in women's political lives. Um, and sometimes because they refuse to make choices about you know, who are you and which identity you choose and that sort of thing. So these questions for feminists have been really salient for at, really at least 25 years. And I, the first people I heard talk about it were Latina feminist writers in the US. I'm sure they weren't the first, but they were the first whose published works really made us all sit up and listen and try to think about this. Right. So, Cynthia, do you think that we're making strides towards equality in today's world? Or, and if you do, how can we reconcile with this with the fact that we've got hyper-masculine figures like Donald Trump dominating the world stage? Well, you know, progress is a funny thing, isn't it? Um, it's kind of two steps forward, one step back. Sometimes it's one step forward, two steps back. Um, one of the things I think we've all learned is that there is no such thing as momentum. Right? You win the vote and then you think, okay, now it'll be smooth sailing. Well, of course, there's going to be people who resist the vote or try to keep women from voting their choice. So I, I'm not sanguine about equality. I'm not sanguine about rolling back sexism. I always think you've got to stay organized, you've got to stay alert, you've got to stay open to other women's experiences. So even if you think, oh gosh, you know, I'm the first in my family to get um, a university degree, it doesn't mean all women are getting university degrees. Or you think, oh, I'm the first to be the manager of my uh, retail store. It must mean progress, but it doesn't mean that other women aren't really in oppressive workplaces. So I, you have to stay organized. Right. That, I think that's, my, that's what I've learned from women all over the world. Don't ever demobilize. Right. Like that. And so what do you think are the biggest challenges facing feminism in the coming years? Well, I think one of the biggest challenges is for us to, all of us who are trying, to, um, nobody, is, nobody is a feminist and then that's the end of it. You're always trying to develop your feminist understandings and your feminist curiosities. And I just spent time in the Ukraine with women peace activists in the Ukraine and you know the um, Ukraine now is very, very uh, complex, very tense, very difficult because of militarism and nationalism and women are being caught crunched, I wouldn't say caught, crunched right in the middle. Um, and so there I was, I mean this was really two weeks ago, um, in Odessa in uh, Ukraine, um, learning things I had never thought of before about how checkpoints um, which are set up in contested, militarized areas, how checkpoints affect women's health. Well, I had never really thought about that. And these um, women activists said that a trip that for a rural woman to a health clinic um, used to take 20 minutes. Now it takes two hours, right? And that's because of war. That's because of militarism. So that was new to me. So I think that feminism will stay alive if it is constantly in the state of learning and constantly you have to have your ears wide open um, to listen and to take in the details of women's lives that aren't like your own. That's the only way that feminism will continue to be useful. Stay awake.
absolutely. There's a lot of advice for all of us to take <laughs> into account. Thank you so much for joining us today, Cynthia. You can view more interviews from the Ipsa World Conference on www.internationalaffairs.org.au. Thank you. Thanks.